The Black Road by Richard A. Knack. Derek Lang, a man weathered by the storms of his past and the recent horrors he had witnessed, found himself adrift in the bustling coastal town of Bramwell. His once promising career as an officer in the Westmarch Navy had been shattered, leaving behind fragments of what could have been. Guilt and despair gnawed at his soul, a constant reminder of the fateful day he lost his best friend, Matt Hu Ring, to the clutches of a demon. Matt's death had occurred during a mission gone terribly wrong, a mission that had led them to the ruins of Torox Port, a desolate and forgotten city along the Dyer River. There, they had encountered the demon Cabraxis, a grotesque entity from the burning hells. As he emerged from a hidden gateway, his presence casting a shadow of darkness over the land. Derek had witnessed the horrors firsthand, the carnage and destruction wrought by the demon's minions, and the agonizing moment when Matt fell to his death, his body broken and lifeless. Unable to escape the haunting memories and the crushing weight of responsibility for Matt's demise, Derek had succumbed to a life of self-destruction. He sought solace in the anonymity of small coastal villages, drifting from town to town like a ship without an anchor, taking on odd jobs as a sellsword or laborer just to keep a roof over his head and a mug of ale in his hand. The potent brew offered a temporary reprieve from the nightmares that plagued him, dreams that replayed the horrors of Torox port and the agonizing image of Matt falling to his death, his lifeless eyes staring back at him. It was in the unassuming village of Seeker's Point, nestled along the rugged coastline south of the barbarian territories, that Derek's path took an unexpected turn. While seeking refuge in the dimly lit tavern known as the Blue Lantern, he encountered a sage named Taramis Vulcan. Taramis, a man of wisdom and experience, his eyes reflecting the depths of knowledge he had accumulated over the years, recognized a connection between Derek and the demon Cabraxis. He revealed that Derek's presence at Torox Port, where he had witnessed Cabraxis's return to the mortal realm, had marked him with a unique destiny to defeat the demon and restore balance to the world. Haunted by his past, and the guilt that clung to him like a shroud, Derek initially resisted Teramis's call to action. He had spent the past year trying to bury his pain and sorrow, drowning his memories in the depths of countless tankards, convinced that he was unworthy of redemption and incapable of facing the darkness that threatened to consume him. However, the sage's words, spoken with conviction and a deep understanding of the forces at play, ignited a flicker of hope within him a glimmer of purpose that he had long thought extinguished. With the memory of Matt's unwavering friendship and the knowledge that he could honor his friend's sacrifice by confronting the demon responsible for his death, Derek reluctantly agreed to join Taramis on his perilous quest. Their journey led them north, away from the familiar coastlines and into the rugged wilderness that bordered the barbarian territories. Their destination was the remote home of Elig Barrows, a descendant of Hauklin, the legendary warrior who had once driven Cabraxis from the mortal realm centuries ago. Hidden within Elig's humble abode was Stormfury, a mystical sword forged with the power of the light to vanquish demons. The sword, imbued with ancient magic and the spirit of a righteous warrior, could only be wielded by someone touched by Cabraxis's darkness, someone who had faced the demon and survived. Upon arriving at Elig's secluded homestead, Nestled among towering fir trees and shrouded in an air of mystery, Derek and Taramis were met with cautious hospitality. The old man, a guardian of the sword and its secrets for generations, his weathered face etched with the wisdom of ages, recognized the weight of their quest and the significance of their arrival. He led them to a hidden chamber beneath his root cellar, a crypt where Hauklin's remains lay entombed, his skeletal hand still clutching the hilt of Stormfury. As Derek approached the tomb, a sense of unease washed over him. He had seen his share of death and destruction during his time in the Navy, but the presence of the legendary sword and the weight of his potential destiny filled him with a mix of fear and anticipation. He reached out to grasp the hilt, his hand trembling slightly, but an invisible barrier prevented him from claiming the weapon. Taramis, sensing Derek's struggle, offered words of encouragement his voice steady and reassuring. He reminded him of the prophecy that foretold the return of Hauklin's sword, 
and the uniting of three individuals, one lost in death, one lost in life, and one lost in himself. Teramis believed that Derek, haunted by his past and struggling with his own identity, was the one destined to wield storm fury. With renewed determination, Derek closed his eyes and focused on the connection he felt to the sword. He thought of Matt, his loyal friend who had always stood by his side, their bond forged in the fires of shared experiences and unwavering loyalty, and the guilt that had tormented him for so long, a heavy burden that he carried on his shoulders like an anchor. He thought of the darkness that lurked within him, the anger and resentment that stemmed from his troubled childhood and the abuse he had suffered at the hands of his father, emotions that threatened to consume him and twist him into something he despised. And he thought of the hope that Taramis had offered, the chance to redeem himself and honor Matt's memory by defeating the demon that had taken his life, a chance to find purpose amidst the chaos and despair that had enveloped him. Suddenly, he heard Matt's voice, clear as day, echoing in his mind, a beacon of hope in the darkness that surrounded him. Take up the sword, Derek, Matt urged, his voice filled with a mix of encouragement and urgency. It's time to finish what we started. With newfound resolve and a surge of determination, Derek reached out once more, his hand steady and unwavering, and this time, the barrier yielded. Storm Fury felt warm and familiar in his grasp, as if it had always been a part of him, an extension of his will and a symbol of the battle he was destined to fight. With Storm Fury in hand, Derek and Taramis, along with their small band of demon hunters, set their sights on Bramwell. The coastal town, once a peaceful community of fishermen and farmers who lived in harmony with the sea and the land, had become a stronghold for Cabraxis's insidious influence. The demon, disguised as Dinap Sten, the Prophet of the Light, had established the Church of the Prophet of the Light, a deceptive facade for his true intentions, to corrupt the hearts of men enslave their souls, and spread his darkness throughout the mortal realm. Joining forces with the unexpectedly alive yet horribly disfigured pirate captain Arabar Raithan, also marked by Cabraxus's darkness and seeking vengeance against the demon for the torment he had endured, they devised a plan to infiltrate the church. Under the cover of darkness, they made their way through a hidden sewer passage a labyrinthine network of tunnels that ran beneath the city like veins beneath the skin. The stench of decay and the dampness of the stone walls added to the oppressive atmosphere, but Derek pressed on, his determination fueled by the weight of his destiny and the memory of his fallen friend. Their path was fraught with peril as they faced hordes of demonic rats, their eyes glowing with malevolent hunger, their sharp claws and gnashing teeth promising a gruesome demise. They also encountered a formidable bone golem, a towering construct of skeletal remains animated by dark magic, its hollow sockets burning with an infernal light. However, with Storm Fury's power and Matt's guidance, Derek and his companions prevailed, cutting a swath through the demonic forces that stood in their way. As they emerged from the sewers into the heart of the church, they found themselves in the midst of a grand cathedral, its high vaulted ceilings, adorned with intricate carvings and stained glass windows that depicted scenes of piety and devotion, a stark contrast to the darkness that lurked within its walls. The air was thick with the scent of incense and the murmur of prayers, creating an atmosphere of reverence and awe. However, a subtle sense of unease permeated the sanctuary, a feeling of something sinister hidden beneath the surface. Standing on a raised platform above the congregation, Buyar Cholik, the high priest of the church and Cabraxus's human vessel, commanded the attention of the assembled worshippers. His words, filled with charisma and promises of miracles, captivated the hearts and minds of the faithful, who had flocked to the church seeking healing, wealth, and the fulfillment of their deepest desires. They hung on his every word, their eyes filled with a mixture of hope and desperation. Cholik, sensing the presence of intruders, his gaze piercing and his voice booming with authority, turned his attention upon Derek and his companions. He denounced them as infidels, enemies of the Prophet of the Light who sought to destroy their faith and rob them of their salvation. He urged his guards and followers to attack, 
his words igniting a spark of violence within the congregation. Chaos erupted within the cathedral as the demon hunters clashed with the church's defenders, their swords and spells clashing in a symphony of violence. The air was filled with the clang of steel, the screams of the wounded, and the roar of spells being unleashed. Derek, wielding storm fury with skill and precision, moved through the melee like a whirlwind, his blade cutting down those who stood in his path. In the midst of the battle, Cholik summoned the stone serpent that served as the gateway to the Black Road, a twisted path leading to the demon's lair. The serpent, its eyes blazing with infernal fire, its massive jaws agape, lunged towards Derek, its scales shimmering with an unholy light. In a moment of desperation and inspired by Matt's guidance, Derek leapt onto the serpent's back and plunged into its fiery maw, disappearing into the darkness of the Black Road. Once again, Derek found himself confronting his deepest fears and the manipulative whispers of Cabraxis. The demon, seeking to break his spirit and claim his soul, subjected him to a series of illusions, forcing him to relive the trauma of his childhood and the guilt of Matt's death. He was transported back to the stable behind his father's butcher's shop, a place where he had endured countless beatings and his father's harsh words of condemnation. He relived the moment when he had contemplated taking his own life, hanging himself from the rafters to escape the pain and despair that consumed him. Through it all, Matt's voice remained a constant presence in his mind, offering encouragement and reminding him of his true strength. With Matt's support and the unwavering power of Storm Fury, Derek broke free from the demon's illusions and confronted Cabraxis in his true form. The demon, a towering figure of darkness with horns, razor-sharp claws, and a malevolent grin, radiated an aura of power and menace. A fierce battle ensued, a clash between light and darkness that would determine the fate of Derek's soul and the future of the mortal realm. Derek, wielding Storm Fury with skill and determination, fought against the demon's onslaught, parrying his blows and striking back with the power of the enchanted blade. Cabraxis, enraged by Derek's resistance and the threat he posed, unleashed his full fury, summoning dark magic and unleashing waves of demonic energy that threatened to tear Derek apart. Despite the overwhelming odds, Derek refused to yield. He drew strength from the memory of Matt, from the hope that Taramis had instilled within him, and from the knowledge that he was fighting for something greater than himself for the sake of his friends, for the innocent lives that had been corrupted by the demon's influence and for the future of humanity. With a final, desperate lunge, Derek plunged Storm Fury into the demon's heart, extinguishing the infernal fire that burned within him. Cabraxis let out a deafening roar, his body convulsing as the power of the light coursed through him, purging the darkness that had consumed him. His form flickered and wavered, then dissipated into a cloud of black smoke and ash, leaving behind only the faint stench of sulfur and decay, a lingering reminder of the evil that had been vanquished. Emerging from the black road back into the cathedral, Derek stood triumphantly before the stunned congregation, his body battered and bruised, but his spirit unbroken. He held Cabraxis's severed head aloft, a gruesome trophy that served as undeniable proof of the demon's demise and the falseness of the Prophet of the Light. The church guards, their morale shattered, and their faith in their leader broken, dropped their weapons and fled into the shadows. The worshippers, their faith shaken to its core, stared at Derek in a mix of awe and disbelief, their minds struggling to comprehend the events that had unfolded before their eyes. However, not all were convinced. Some of the most devout followers, blinded by their fanaticism and unwilling to accept the truth, accused Derek of heresy and murder. They called for his death, claiming that he had slain a holy man and destroyed their only hope for salvation. The cathedral erupted into chaos as the crowd turned against Derek and his companions, their anger and confusion fueled by the whispers of doubt and resentment that lingered in their hearts. If you enjoyed this summary, please consider subscribing to the channel.